Welcome to another episode. I'm your host, Daniel Brahim. As one journeys further into the month of Kiyak, one looks no further than the love bestowed upon us through the incarnation of God the Word. As St. Gregory the Theologian states in his liturgy, As a good shepherd, you have sought after that which had gone astray. As a true father, you have travailed with me, I who had fallen. Emulating our first father, the church has termed its shepherds various plays on the word father, such as Abuna or Ava. But what characterizes true fatherhood in the Orthodox Church? Moreover, what role do the early church fathers play in the safeguarding of the sound faith? How much credence is given to them? And what do they have to say about the value in receiving the incarnate word? As the church progresses through this joyful season, I wish to remind you of the significance of who is to be received. The next father who I wish to introduce to you today on our journey through Kiak is St. John Chrysostom, Patriarch of Constantinople or in modern day Turkey in the fourth century. Titled St. John Chrysostom or St. John of the Golden Mouth, such as a testament to his eloquence of speech and the strength by which he spoke. When his father died at a young age, his mother exerted every effort to raise him piously, allowing him to obtain saintly virtues and study law and philosophy at the hands of Libanius, an Antiochian philosopher, where he acquired such speech. His friend Basilius encouraged him to forsake the world, leading to the start of his ascetic journey, and eventually as Patriarch of Constantinople. He is further known for his defense against Nestorianism, which threatened the one nature of Christ. On the genealogy of Christ mentioned in Matthew chapter 1, commentating on the son of David, the son of Abraham, he writes, quote, Because of this very thing, most of all, should you marvel, that being son of the unoriginate God and his true son, he suffered himself to be called also son of David, that he might make you son of God. He suffered a slave to be a father to him, that he might make the Lord father to you a slave. When therefore you are told that the son of God is son of David and of Abraham, Doubt not any more that you too, the son of Adam, shall be son of God. For not at random, nor in vain, did he abase himself so greatly, only he was minded to exalt us. Thus he was born after the flesh, that you might be born after the Spirit. In this homily, St. John asks us to consider what it means for God to be incarnate. Indeed, he was born of the flesh, so that we might be born of the Spirit. He was called the son of David and of Abraham, so that what we might be called a son of God. And he subjected himself and put himself at our feet to once again be known as our father. He also utilizes an appealing example when he says, imagine two people with a huge chasm or gap between them, unable to be re reunited. God incarnate, who being immeasurable, was the bridge between these two people the old covenant and the new, God's nature with ours, and his image with ours. Thus, just as we are now called sons of the king, we inherit everything that he has. Now, what will be the points highlighted by the fathers as a whole? God, in his unconceivable wisdom and foreknowledge, knew of the susceptibility of man to fall. Yet in his benevolent love for us, he created us, calling each and every one of us by name to his kingdom and to be restored once again to being united with him in his glory. That is not enough, however. Imagine for but a moment, a priest is coming to sleep at your place tonight. Will you not prepare and refresh his room to be as pleasing as possible? How about a bishop? You would clean the entire house. How about the Pope? Why, the city would be beaming and everything nearby would be prepared to receive one esteemed with such high honor. Therefore, how much more should we prepare to receive Christ the Word in our very hearts, which we not only receive in this season, but every time we partake of the Eucharist? Let us therefore examine ourselves to behold that which we are about to receive and to further understand the magnanimity of God's love for us. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Tune in next time to hear about another father. Thank you.